Welcome to Truth in History. God's true people, Israel. Revelation of God's plan. Fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Mystery of God shall be finished. Kingdoms become kingdoms of Christ. Truth in History with Charles A. Jennings. In this series of programs, I am talking about a generation that knows not God. And our text is found in the book of Judges, chapter number 2. And just to quickly set the scene once again, as Israel moved into the Canaan land, they saw the wondrous works of God under the leadership of Joshua and the elders of Joshua. And then it came time for Joshua to die and the elders to die. And the angel of the Lord gave the people a warning. Number one, when you went into the Canaan land, I gave you a law. And I gave you some restrictions. Number one, do not make any leagues or agreements or covenants with the people of the land. And this is found in Joshua, or excuse me, in the book of Judges, chapter 2 and verse 2. Ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of the land, and ye shall, number two, throw down their idols. Because Israel had a God. In Exodus chapter 20, it said, I am the Lord your God that brought you out of Egypt. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Monotheism, one God, one God, one set of laws to live by. But Israel disobeyed. So as we go through this chapter, the Lord tells them, if you do not obey me, I will not drive out the heathen. And these heathens, these people of the land, shall be as thorns in your side, and their gods shall be a snare unto you. Now, I'm not only talking about ancient Israel, I'm talking about America, modern America. America, because this fits us so well. Can you imagine the glory of the pilgrims coming over here? And they said that these, their, their journey across that great body of water and landing at Plymouth Rock was for the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the establishment of the kingdom of God. But that generation is gone. That generation is dead. And we have forgotten the works of the Lord. And all the works of the Lord that God has done through the centuries, the two centuries in this great nation, there have been mighty moves of God and some of the most incorrigible of people have been changed by the power of the living Christ. But those great revivals aren't even held in remembrance in most churches. Most churches have forgotten the Protestant Reformation. Now they celebrate October 31 as Halloween. But we come down to verse 7. The people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen the great works 
of the Lord that He did for Israel. Verse number 10, That generation was gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which He had done for Israel. As I have said before, one of the marks of a decadent society is that it sacrifices its children on the altars of humanism. What are the altars of humanism? Heathenism, bringing foreign religions and mixing them with Christianity. It's called religious syncretism or religious pluralism. And when you do that, you diminish the authority of God and the authority of Scripture. In other words, heathenism is nothing more than having the wrong God. Moloch, Balaam, Ashtaroth. Why do you think some of these churches celebrate Halloween? That's demonism. That's not Christianity. Even the traditional Christmas celebration has a pagan origin. Even parts of Easter celebration, the traditional Easter celebration, has elements of paganism. It should not be in the body of Christ. Number, number one, I've listed heathenism. Number two is hedonism. Hedonism is sensuality. Hedone is a Greek word which means delight or pleasure. And in a hedonistic philosophy, it's, it's this. The doctrine that pleasure is the principal good and should be the aim of all action. That's the philosophy of hedonism. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. We are living in a, a generation and in a land of amusement. And the word amuse means not to think, because muse means to think, and the prefix a means no or not, no thinking. That's what amusement means. Look at the trash that comes out of Hollywood. Look at the trash that comes out of the movie houses, the movie industry. Just simply pleasure, entertainment, amusement. Our nation is amusing itself to death. The psychology of hedonism is the theory that a person's actions always have pleasure as their purpose, in other words, pleasure-seeking pleasure-seeking. There's nothing wrong with Memorial Day. Celebrate and commemorate the sacrifice of our soldiers, our men in uniform. But is it really celebrated that way across the board in this country, or is it turned out to be a, a day of just pleasure? Go to the beach, go fishing. Forget the real meaning of the day. Moral relativism. Moral relativism. That's all part of humanism. And we're still talking about a generation that knew not God after the time 
of Joshua. And we're talking about a generation that knows not the Lord. Moral relativism is moral freedom. Really, it's freedom to be immoral. It's the expression that man has become nothing more than a social animal. Recently I was protesting this directive that came from the, right, the, the White House of gender-neutral bathrooms, and I was shocked to find out how many people were in favor of gender-neutral bathrooms. They have lost their moral compass. They have lost their sense of sensitivity. I got more cousins. I got more waves. I got more nasty words thrown at me and the others that were with me than I have probably maybe in a lifetime. We were shocked. The masses, not everyone, but the masses, it appears as though is in favor of this presidential directive. It's not even a law from Congress. Freedom, moral relativity, whatever you think is right, do it. It's a generation that knows not God. They might even go to church, but they don't know the Christ of the, of the Bible. They don't know the Christ of glory. Existentialism. Man is the source of knowledge. That's the meaning of existentialism. There's no absolutes that does away with the Ten Commandments. When God said, Thou shalt not, existentialism comes along and says, You can do it if you want to. It doesn't matter. There's no absolutes because what they're seeking is no responsibility and no judgment. If there's no moral responsibility in the minds of these perverts, these college professors that has poisoned the minds of our youth and even in public schools, Being that the minds are perverted, they're given over to a reprobate state of mind. So therefore, existentialism is being taught in our schools, political correctness, not only in our colleges, but our high schools and middle schools, maybe even elementary schools. Can you believe that it's permitted and even taught in some schools, I've heard, that if a, if a young boy wakes up one morning and thinks he's a girl, then he can just do whatever he wants to when he gets to school. He can go in the boy's bathroom or the girl's bathroom. Moral relativism. We've sunk to an all-time low, and our president, excuses it, permits it, and even enforces it with federal threat. I will withdraw your money if you don't comply, school board. That's what you call tyranny, abuse of power. Folks, we are that generation after Joshua, so to speak. The old timers are dead. 
those that preached holiness and preached against worldliness and worldly entertainment. They're dead. Now we've got a whole new crop of preachers that you can basically do whatever you want to do. And they'll preach that which they know is acceptable with the masses. The next one, get ready, gymnasia. Now every school has a gym. Do you know the original meaning of that word gym, G-Y-M? The gym was a place in ancient Greece equipped for physical training. Gymnos means naked or stripped. A gymnosophist in the Hindu sect is a nudist. When we look at the book of Exodus, chapter 32, verse 25, Moses comes down from the mountain, and when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come after me. And all the sons of Eli, Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, there is a trend and has been prevalent for decades in this country of tolerating nudity. Look at the trash that comes out of Hollywood with all of its pornographic, filthy movies. But who is speaking against it? The church is not crying out. The church is silent because they know that they will get in trouble if they define the movie industry as the gates of hell. What did Moses see? He saw a golden calf. He saw dancing. He saw nudity. And he saw shame. When a nation that once has known God, not everybody in America was saved in the past generations. Of course not. There were some mean rascals. But when a nation that had once a moral compass and revered the Bible, and that can be proven in many of our institutions of the past, and our great leaders, some, many of our founding fathers, revered this book as the law of God and the means and the message of salvation through Jesus Christ. But when that nation despises its history, turns its back upon its foundations, and accepts moral relativism, it will automatically begin to accept nudity in public. Public nudity. The way some people dress, you go to the department store and some, you see some of the way people dress look like they're going to a skunk fight instead of shopping. 
we have lost our moral sensitivity at large in this nation. God help us. Abortion. Abortion is prolicide, P-R-O-L-I-C-I-D-E, which means the killing off of your offspring. The killing of one's own child. It's absolutely the mark of a heathen nation. Moloch has now taken front seat. Front seat. Behind the steering wheel, so to speak, of our nation. Worshiping the God of pleasure at the expense of your children. There is a judgment day coming. 58 million plus babies murdered in the womb. Don't you know their blood cries out unto a holy God in heaven? It does. Body worship. Body worship. What about this body worship? When men and women forget that our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, what does the book of 1 Corinthians tell us? The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 6, verse 19. Paul is writing to the Corinth church, and he says, What? Know ye not that your body, our physical body, is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. They belong to God. Our body, our physical body, belongs to God. Our body is a temple for God to dwell in, not a shack for derelicts. to find their home, or philosophies, evil philosophies, to find themselves living in this body. We have forgotten that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. This is what he says to the Corinth church. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. In other words, his body, he was saying that our body could be a snare unto us to fulfill the lust of the flesh the lust of the eye and the pride of life, and therefore be a castaway in the kingdom of God. We must bring our body under subjection. But these days it's body worship. Body worship. It's the worshiping of the physical man at the neglect of the spiritual man. May the Lord help us. We see back in our text in Judges chapter 2 
Verse 11, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. You see, when you turn from the true God, you're going to turn to some other God. It's inevitable. You will not remain neutral. Some people say, I don't believe anything. I don't believe in any religion. They do. They believe in their own religion, a religion of their own making. It's called humanism. Everybody has a religion. It's a code of belief and conduct. The children of Israel ch turn from Yahweh Himself, turn over here to Balaam. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods. Other gods, small g, of the gods of the people that were round about them, and they bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. Who's listening? Who's listening to me today to understand and to follow this principle and to realize the impact of this? They forsook the God of their fathers, Yahweh Himself. They turned to idols. They turned to Balaam, and then they followed other gods, the gods of the people that were round about them, other nations. That's what our nation is doing today. That's what some churches are doing, following the gods of other people. We're supposed to be a Christian nation, and Jesus Christ and Him alone is our God. But I know that's old-fashioned. And like one man said, who's listening and who cares? Well, if you would like to receive a copy of our magazine, Truth and History, I encourage you to write us or call us or, or send us an email, check out our website, truthandhistory.org. We'll be glad to send you this magazine free of charge, plus our six brochures that have been very enlightening to many people, one about cremation, the other about the covenants of the Bible, the other one concerning the truth about the six-pointed star. And folks, Jesus Christ is coming back. There is going to be a judgment of a nation, and He's going to judge this nation because Jesus Christ is not coming back as a babe in a manger. He's coming back as a ruling conqueror to put down evil and rule over the nations of this earth. For any material offered on this program or to be a part of this ministry, please write or call today. We thank you and may God bless you for your response to this end time ministry. Truth in History, where the Word of God is not found.